Come on, playlist. Let's go.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Football Diaries. We're doing a little mock draft today. We're going to do a super flex mock. <clears throat> and uh, seems to be some question as to how the draft is set up, but never mind how the draft is set up. Draft it like it's a two-quarterback draft, people. It's not hard. We'll help you figure it out. Um, so uh, so welcome in. It is uh, Thursday, uh, August 25th. We, you're heading into the final week of preseason play. A lot of things going on. Uh, you know, I don't want to jinx anything, but seems like everyone's staying pretty healthy this uh, summer. Hopefully that continues. We're gonna, not going to see a ton of the starters playing, but we will see some, including one Tom Brady uh, will be starting, it seems. So uh, we got that going for us. Uh, and uh, as you as you see, as you come in, you know we're going to start the mock draft here shortly, and I'll kind of comment on it as we go along. So if you want to go ahead and click on the link, you need a sleeper account uh, to make this happen if you want to get in on it. So if you're just clicking on that link and it's not working, you're going, what the hell's going on? That's what the hell's going on. Have a sleeper account. Um, have some of our uh, usuals in there. Troy Olson, uh, Voice and Fuego, great seeing you in, uh, in Canton a couple weeks ago. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get this figured out. We're setting this up for a super flex. I, I'm not sure how the settings worked. I didn't set it up. So if it's not set up as a two quarterback or a super flex draft, treat it like that if you're drafting in the draft. And I will comment accordingly on all that as well. I'm here to mock the mock. Take questions. If you have just general questions while we're following along with the draft, feel free to chime in. I'll answer to the best of my abilities. And, uh, and we'll figure some stuff out. Uh, you know, the, don't know if y'all saw this afternoon, Aaron Donald whacking Bengals over the head with a helmet. Uh, sounds like there won't be severe punishment for that. Seems like that only works for severe punishment if you're in a game. The NFL doesn't get in unless it's in a game. Uh, so if you're wondering why they aren't trying to, to kick out, kick Aaron Donald out for a six game suspension that Miles Garrett got for knocking let's see a statement from okay uh so what's going on something's going on with denzel mims he's asking for a trade or his release shocking development that right uh we'll see denzel mims has come up short since his arrival in the nfl uh hasn't quite got it done so he's asking for a trade but plenty of things going on here today so again if you have questions go ahead and chime in uh, with those as we go through this. A uh, few things uh, worth noting. Tom Brady will play a little bit this week, coming off one of the oddest occurrences we've seen, th that I've seen. I mean, I just think it's like, I can't remember. I've been doing this a long time. I'm like 60 years old. I've been watching football all my life. And, uh, you know, we've only really got the close trading camp coverage in recent years, the, uh, the Twitter era. But just, man, super odd for a guy like Tom Brady, known to be so diligent and such a grinder, to, to disappear uh, for some period of time in the middle of training camp. I get it, you know, you know, coming off. Hi, Scott Kobe, coming off his, uh, you know, retirement, brief though it was. Uh, just interesting to see. He will start this week. They'll get him a little work. Offensive line there is a little bit of a, a concern, right? The, especially the middle of the offensive line. Uh, that's the place most quarterbacks don't like pressure coming from. Uh, that's definitely the place quarterbacks named Tom Brady don't like pressure coming from. What does this mean for that offense? We'll see if Chris Godwin is available to open the season. Seems likely like he's heading in that direction. Uh, Mike Evans has been a little tweaked with a hamstring. Julio Jones, Russell Gage, all in the mix there. Uh, Kyle Rudolph added a tight end with Gronk being gone. Leonard Fournette uh, still be a trusted asset for Tom Brady. Seems likely Rashad White gaining a little... Uh, run there though but it all starts up from the offensive line same with in dallas where tyron smith horrible hamstring injury uh that's going to cost him if not the entire season some fair portion of the season so so that's going to be tough like you know i don't know if you saw that there's a breakdown out there of how much worse this offense has been or how much better it's been let me rephrase that uh it's been with tyron smith there and let's see if i can pull these numbers up really quick because i i thought it was fascinating uh, the difference is it was stark. Let's see if I can pull this up in fairly short order. And I know we'll get the draft going here as soon as everyone's uh, clocked in, logged in. We start. And it, again, if you want to get in on a mock, go ahead and do. So here, this is Underdog put this out. The Cowboys splits with Tyron Smith on and off the field in, in 2021. Uh, the, let's see, the pressure percentage. With him on the field, 29.2% pressure on Dak Prescott. When he's not on the field, 35%. Wow. 
sack percentage. 3.9% when he's playing, 6.2% when he's not playing. Wow. Rushing yards per attempt, five yards a carry when he's playing, four yards a carry when he is not playing. That's a pretty stark difference for an offensive lineman. Uh, you don't need an account just to watch. You can just watch along. And, and by the way, the draft has started, uh, and as you would expect in a super flex. Uh, I've not, so Scott, I've not downgraded Brady so much as I've just started kind of avoiding him. And not, you know, so like, so those of you who are out there and you're in like a single league and things like that and, and you're making this decision, yes, I would probably downgrade Brady. I'm, it will be in a hundred drafts by the time the season starts. And so I already have a ton of shares of Tom Brady baked into my cake already. Uh, <clears throat> so downgrading him is not necessarily the point. I think I might like, I think there's a lot of players in his same range that I'd be comfortable taking if we look at the current NFFC data. Uh, the latest uh, ADP wow. from them. Tom Brady's going as quarterback 10. Like, if I want to avoid him, Jalen Hurst going a little before, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, I'm comfortable with all of them. I'm comfortable with Trey Lance going right after him, Matthew Stafford, even with his elbow issue, Derek Carr. I could maybe get Tom Brady and still land one of these other fairly high-end players in my estimation, Kirk Cousins, etc. So, so I'm not really avoiding him, and I think if you're in, your, you know, in a single home league draft, that might be the approach you want to take. Just make sure you have a really good backup. Uh, so, so you don't need to, the, uh, Dennis, you don't need to count just to watch. You'll see it right here on the YouTube channel uh, <clears throat> as the draft goes on, as you can see. So Superflex drafts, it's kind of struck me, and I've been in one Monday. I did a, super, a mock draft Monday on the Football Diehards radio program on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. And... Uh, it was myself, Mike Dempsey, Jamie Calandro, uh, Eric Romoff. And I think we kind of got caught up in a thing, a little dynamic where we were all trying to wait a little bit extra. But I've seen that kind of come to pass. I covered the Flex League on Sirius, uh, the Flex League uh, Super Flex uh, two nights ago. I felt like the quarterbacks went pretty reasonable range. I know when I did my Scott Fishbowl draft, which is basically a two quarterback Super Flex draft. Uh, I didn't get my second quarterback. And by the way, Justin Herbert was my uh, second quarterback taken in that Scott Fishbowl, so mirroring this. And that draft basically did mirror this. We got a timer out of there. Come on, drop top hawk. Let's go. Get off the auto. Want to see a cool draft. But so same thing that happened here happened in the, in the one I was. And yes, hit the like button. Also, hit the uh, subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Notification bell. Do all that stuff. Go to footballdiehards.com. Check out all our stuff. The August update uh, draft guide is running right now. All the magazines available for purchase. Plenty of evergreen information in there, strategy, in-depth stuff. But if you go to the Football Diehards website and you want to purchase any of the uh, premium products there, use the promo code DIEHARDS to get 15% off. <clears throat> so, back to this whole super flex thing, people. Um, so, <clears throat> you would expect, you know, so we, well, we've got five quarterbacks going so far in the first round. This seems like we're at about that point where maybe they'll start slipping into the second round. Might still get a couple more. Uh, but these are the values you kind of see. The Christian McCaffrey going at, what, the 10th pick or 9th pick overall. Uh, Kyler Murray gets in there, and uh, Troy Olson will have these double-up picks. He'll go Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott. Nail them down. So this has been my approach in the past. Nail them down early. And I do think if you're sitting at the 12 spot, that's not a bad approach still. But I think for me, uh, starting early, I had the second pick overall in the Scott Fishbowl, for example. And uh, and I took Justin Herbert. Josh Allen went off first. I didn't pick my second quarterback, I want to say, until the fifth, sixth round, fifth round. Uh, so And that's like a little long. And you start getting a little bit of FOMO. That whole fear of missing out thing becomes a reality. And it makes you a little nervous. But I do think people are... are I think, you know, as super flex and two quarterback... Super flex more so than two quarterback. Two quarterback, the panic is going to be on, right? But I think in super flex, where you have a little bit of flexibility with the flex, so to speak, where it doesn't have to be a quarterback, but you'd prefer it to be because they score a lot of points. Um, people are people have kind of uh, acclimated to this, right? Kind of gotten used to the whole notion of uh, of waiting a little bit longer for the second quarterback. And there's pretty good value and depth at quarterback. And I think the big question is, you know, if you get your two, do you want a third? And I think in a lot of cases, I do. So we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, some of our regulars in here, Scott Kobe, great high stakes player. Uh, there we have Matthew Whitfield, uh, and Scott in the, uh, fourth, what, second position. Matthew looks like he's in the seventh. 
the eighth position, Emil Cadillac in the ninth position, and uh, Troy. Oh, look at Matt Donnelly's in here. Hi, Matt. Thanks for coming in, man. The, the great Matt Donnelly uh, from Fantasy the Vipers, uh, the Dynasty Vipers, uh, jumps in, and he goes two quarterbacks off the bat as well. Kyler Murray and Joe Burrow, good combo to start off. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight quarterbacks off in the uh, first first round and a half uh, with two teams already having secured two quarterbacks. Perfectly understandable at, at the tail end, I think. You know, in fact, maybe something I would do as well. Matt Donnelly does have the best mustache in the business, among other things. He, don't, don't think the mustache is the only selling feature here, people. There's more. Some things I can't even tell you about. Or Matt would kill me. Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, so interesting uh, start where, you know, looking at, uh, Matt Whitfield, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, you're not going to see Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler falling or Jamar Chase for that matter, falling into the second round of too many drafts, Dalvin Cook, maybe not either. Uh, but in a super flex, you'll see that happen. Uh, and, uh, and it is kind of interesting. So as we're rolling along, if you have any questions about just general draft strategy, super flex draft strategy. Uh, throw them out there. We'll, I will discuss them. If we get a chance here, may bring somebody on to visit with us. I screwed that up so bad last time. I'd like another uh, shot at it, but but not sure we'll get to it uh, today. So Matthew, if you're out there, I'll uh, I'll hit you up on the chat if we get to that point. But in the meantime, go ahead and throw your questions out. So Jonathan Taylor and Travis Kelsey. So looking at the teams that have yet to draft a quarterback, it's more than I would expect. Um, but again, it's not entirely shocking as we kind of normalize a little bit. And we'll see what the uh, first round, uh, the first pick overall does. You got Josh Allen, you've got a great start. You go a couple of the position players and claim that value because that's the thing, right? The, you're claiming value. You look at guys like Austin Eckler, or Derrick Henry, they're not Jamar Chase, they're not making it out of the first round in any other draft but this. And that's this is going to push other players down a little bit and depress their values a little bit. So you're going to get some bargains later on. Uh, we'll see what the old guy, 66 goes, Tom Brady, the old guy drafting an old guy, shocking development people. Dennis Brown thinks it's a good trade bait anyway. Sure. Um, and we've got, uh, so we'll see what he does. There goes Saquon Barkley. What Barkley is the run has been impressive and I kind of get it. You know, I mean, I can remember when Saquon Barkley was very good. I can remember when the Giants' offense was better. Maybe both of these things can come to pass this season where Barkley is better and the offense is better. I do feel like we're drafting the Giants, in particular Barkley, as if the New York offense is going to be a lot better. I don't know if it's going to be a lot better. It's going to be better because it would be hard to be worse. It's been pretty horrible. Here's where it's going to be interesting, Sam Bam. Uh, a regular in this in these drafts as well comes in gets his first quarterback Matthew Stafford in a super flex in round three is damn good value so interesting now we've got no teams we got three teams four teams that have yet to take a quarterback and we'll see if they kind of make that move here would not surprise me in the least to see that happen uh, and and I'll be interested I'm kind of would like to curious to see what happens if they don't take one Aaron Rodgers goes to David 462. Uh, and that makes perfect sense. Najee Harris, Debo Samuel, and Aaron Rodgers. Uh, drop Talk Hawk, nicely done there. Cooper Cup, Dalvin Cook, and Trey Lance. That's a hell of a start. I would take that all day long. Uh, Tim, TJ Monday, I think. Uh, TJ Monday, 04. Jefferson Adams Carr, a little zero running back start here. Uh and I think that's not as big a deal in this. Or is, it's a little less intriguing in this than it is, again, because some of the values are depressed. That's a hell of a start as well. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Derek Carr, the stack. Uh, if you're in the chat there, TJ Monday, was that an intentional? Was that something that planned or did it happen organically? Uh, Matthew goes ahead and gets uh, Kirk Cousins, an overlooked commodity, I think. Uh, you know, just the guy has been very productive. Uh, in a Mike Zimmer offense, there's what I wanted to see. RX Nomads going quarterback, zero QB in the first three rounds. I wanted to see this uh, selfishly just to see kind of how it plays out and see what, see what happens for my own purposes, right? And this is one of the great things about these mock drafts. You can uh, hang out, kind of see what other approaches are being taken. 
uh, experiment a little bit if you uh, so desire. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, one more time, if you're out there and you're kind of watching and you have general questions, not necessarily about this draft, but your own draft strategy, players you're interested in, uh, news questions, uh, depth chart questions, anything you have, go ahead and throw them in the chat and I'll get to those uh, as we go along. So uh, Troy Olson, Voice and Fuego, starts out with Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, interesting this Packers backfield, right? We've got Aaron Rodgers saying that both those running backs, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, he's the other one, he with the big, big legs, um, <clears throat> could be 50-catch players, 50 catch, uh, have 50 catches. Boy, if that's the case, I want, you know, you're going to see it a regular, you know, non-super flex type draft. You're going to see Aaron Jones. Uh, I don't think there's such thing as loving Zeke too much. Uh, I think he's a great value, and that's not a bad spot to get hit him up, Troy. Ooh, ooh, that's beautiful. So we've got four draft picks without a quarterback so far uh, for the 10th tenth, tenth pick there. What is that, BX or RX Nomads? BX Nomads? That's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting start. I'm curious to see how it plays out. Nemo, of course, pushing it a little bit as well. Got Jalen Hurts as his top option. Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift, Kyle Pitts. We'll be diving into the receivers undoubtedly soon. But getting back to the Green Bay running backs to finish my thought before I get totally ran astray here. So if we're looking in the general, you know, in a, in a normal non, you know, uh, super flex type draft, I want to say the ADP for these guys. What it's a pretty big difference. It's uh, so Aaron Jones is going off his quarterback, his running back ten, eighteenth pick overall. AJ Dillon twenty four, sixty third pick overall. So. That's the difference from the second round to the fifth round. That's a fair amount of value. If you really think that A.J. Dillon, if you believe Aaron Rodgers think A.J. Dillon is going to get 50 catches and you're in a PPR league, I wonder if the, the good idea isn't hammering some of the value in another position. In this case, like, look, it's the third round. Aaron Jones is a fine pick here. Uh, but I wonder if, if waiting for A.J. Dillon isn't a viable approach. Um, <clears throat> Scott Kobe. Yes, you can ask a keeper question, a Tavarin, if I said that right. I got the, I got the little tick in there, Tavarin. Okay, we'll see if. Um, if you pick third in a PPR draft, if McCaffrey and Taylor gone, where would I go? I go Derrick Henry, uh, Scott. It's pretty easy for me. <clears throat> and I think the only reason he's lingering later is concerns about the injury. Uh, just I just retweeted a tweet from Teron Davenport, who's reporting – from the field talking about some of the impressive cuts that Derrick Henry's making and some of the explosiveness he's showing. Uh, and so, <clears throat> so if you're looking at Derrick Henry and you look at him last year through eight games, he had, what, 219 carries. He was 40 fantasy points ahead of the field. It took a number of weeks for most of the field to catch up with him. Uh, it wasn't like a one-week gap. He had a couple-week gap on some of the top players. So <clears throat> I think he gives you that huge upside and that huge volume. And I'm a volume chaser. Uh, I am all about the volume. I think, you know, and I think those top three, I think there's a top tier for me, right? Is And it's McCaffrey and Taylor, Taylor McCaffrey, whichever order. I've talked about this before, but if you haven't heard it, I'll give you the, give you the sales pitch here. Like if you want to play it safe, I think Jonathan Taylor. So I don't think anyone's safe, right? Everyone can get hurt. Anyone can get hurt in the NFL. Sometimes everyone. <clears throat> and if you're looking at the top 12 and regular ADP, Eight of those players have missed time due to injury. The four who have not are the younger players. Uh, I want to say Najee Harris, Jonathan Taylor, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. Everyone else in the top 12, maybe even a little beyond, has missed significant time. Not like Christian McCaffrey, 23 games in two years' time, but significant time. And Derrick Henry, remember, he, has, he doesn't miss a ton of time either. Last year was an odd injury, broken foot, and it's the two-edged sword of football, both NFL and fantasy. Production comes from, from opportunities opportunities can lead to injuries because you're why well, you're taking more reps you're getting more turns uh, it's an issue so if you're sitting there at one and two and you're deciding between your number one and you're deciding between McCaffrey and Taylor or Taylor and McCaffrey <clears throat> I can see perfectly good reasons for drafting either one for Christian McCaffrey it's the fact that he scored 30 points a game going back to or averaged 30 points a game going back to 19 2019 <clears throat> when he's been healthy he hasn't been healthy that much. If you have concerns about that, it's not like Jonathan Taylor is without upside. And if you're hearing all the talk that, oh, wow, Jonathan Taylor, they're going to lighten his workload a little bit, 
Mm, very little bit, I would guess, right? Naheem Hines getting a little buzz as a guy who's, you know, going to play a bigger role in the passing game. You might see them on the field more together. I think all these things are entirely possible. But Jonathan Taylor evaporating, you're not going to take the ball out of the hands of your best player. It's probably not a great idea. And the Colts are probably – certainly Frank Reich is smart enough to know this. So you look at the upside of these players, right? And, and I think if Christian McCaffrey's healthy, you're looking at maybe a player and a half value. Jonathan Taylor's like a player and a quarter, right? 21-point average last year, had a 50-point game against the Buffalo Bills in Week 11 last year, had three games of over, including that game, over 30 points. <clears throat> so it's not like he's without upside, and he does have some receiving equity, and I think Matt Ryan's an update, upgrade at quarterback there and certainly incapable of dumping it off and, and getting the ball downfield to his primary receivers. I think Michael Pittman, who we saw go here, uh, where did Pittman go? Did I see him go, or was that in another draft that I'm doing simultaneous to doing this? I guess I have not seen Pittman go. Nope, I guess not. Probably we'll see him go fairly soon. I'm looking at the range. Well, yeah, he went off. There I saw him. I'm sorry. I went with the uh, to team one there. Uh, the old guy took him. And that's a pretty nice start for the old guy with the three quarterbacks. That's an interesting start. And here we go. BX Nomads on the clock without a quarterback. Is it time? No, he takes it out one more. I'm loving this. Thank you so much for, you know, doing this experiment for me. I uh, love seeing how this plays out. I'd like notice Emil Cadillac, uh, the chief honcho here at Football Diehards, going with the single quarterback, Jalen Hurts. I don't know how everyone feels about Jalen Hurts. <clears throat> Heard Adam Rank on NFL uh, Network this morning call him the quarterback one this year. I think it's a fair argument, right? I think there's a there, there's a point to be made there. And he did a comparison to, you know, the progress that Josh Allen made over the course of his first few seasons to what we've seen so far from Hertz. And the reporting from Philadelphia training camp, if you have not heard, has been phenomenal, especially in terms of uh, A.J. Brown uh, being locked in with in sync with Jalen Hurts. And, of course, the value of Jalen Hurst lies in his rushing ability as well as the passing. So if they can put all those things together, it's going to be a hell of a run. Uh, so interesting pick there, but still no second quarterback. And BX Nomads now uh, on the – there goes the first quarterback. Interesting. And we're in round six. This is my second quarterback in the Scott Fishbowl. And if you haven't been following along with the news, Winston has been dealing with a foot injury. He is back in 11-on-11 drills. Sounds like he'll be on track to start the season at his usual spot under center, or his new spot, I guess you would call it, the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, he did it last year until he tore his ACL and wasn't horrible, right? So there's a lot of optimism there. Interesting start. So Christian McCaffrey, again, a guy that I like an awful lot. Jamar Chase. So getting back, just to finish my thought on the one, two, and three picks. Like if you once you've decided between McCaffrey and Taylor, I mean, I would include Henry in that conversation because I think he does give you that dominant touch load. So does Najee Harris, though. I think you could say it's safe to say, and then I'd probably get into the wide receiver. So there's my top picks. Anyhow, um, so interesting to see how that uh, start goes with uh, Jameis Winston. Christian McCaffrey, Jamar Chase, two huge high-end plays. Mark Andrews, a player I love. I'm liking this team more and more. I'm going to be eager to see who that second quarterback is and maybe the third if he gets that third. Because, you know, the deeper you go, the longer you wait. Uh, Troy Olson wishing his stack was intentional. How does the stack here? Wilson Prescott. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jerry Judy. Nicely done. I would like. I prefer the organic stacks. I prefer, you know, I mean, and by organic, I don't mean, un you know, unintentional. I mean, when you're not overpaying for either of the pieces. I don't think you're overpaying for Judy here. I think that's a fair value, right? I'm assuming Sutton is gone. Have not seen him. Is Sutton gone, Troy? And if not, why did you take Judy over Sutton? And if so, I get, oh, there he was gone. Fair enough. Interesting. Robert Ferrick has a question. Number four pick in a one-point PPR. Would I secure my top running back or go with one of the top wide receivers? I, hi, Andrea. I think it depends kind of on who's there and who's gone. I think right at number four, you know, if you like that volume. So, so I like them, uh, Taylor, McCaffrey, and Henry. Then after that, it gets a little cloudy. Like I like Najee Harrison off a lot. I think he's going to have a huge workload. I'm all about the workloads. I think Justin Jefferson is going to have a huge workload. I think Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup are going to have huge workloads. So I think for me, four is where it starts getting a little bit tricky. 
I think, so, don't want to be a hot taker here, uh, but let's go ahead and be a hot taker here. Reasons for concerns for Najee Harris. So, when you hear the team say that they want to lighten his workload a little bit, and I have posed this question to a number of beat writers who cover the Steelers on a daily basis. They've all laughed when I said that. So are they really going to cut back? And they've all laughed, literally laughed. Nobody believes they're going to necessarily cut back his workload. They might cut back his snaps a little bit. Uh, I know the running backs coach has this very specific number. I think it's seven snaps fewer. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you know fewer touches, though. But what might mean fewer touches is the quarterback situation where Ben Roethlisberger's semi noodleish arm might not have been looking to go as deep, and maybe he was looking to dump off more often, and that was a big part of the the target share that we saw Najee Harris get, and 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 so I think you know I so I don't want to I don't want to overstate the case. Let me let me just bring up the numbers here uh, and 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 throw them out there. Uh, so it was a total of what three hundred seven carries, seventy four catches last year, right? If they've dialed them back from 300 to 200 and 275, would that be that horrible? No. If they cut his catches back, and I think that's where you're going to see the load lightened a little bit. Uh, so if we went from maybe 74 down to the 50s, down closer to 50. And so he didn't need to be a little more efficient, and that was the problem. Last year he averaged 3.9 yards a carry. Maybe he can be a little more efficient as a runner. They did have done some slight upgrading the offensive line. Uh, so I might like that, but I think all of this sets up the fact that I'm probably looking at Jefferson cup and chase there. And, uh, if I'm in a single draft, I, I might lean to the wide receivers, certainly in PPR. So this draft is rolling right along. We're in round seven here and I'm looking for one team, two team. Well, there went one down. So we've got one. Two two teams left with just three teams left with just one quarterback each. So we'll see if that changes here with my man or my girl. BM BX Nomads, Nova Nomads, Marquise Brown sticking with the one quarterback. Um, I'll tell you why people are avoiding acres. They are scared of the chatter. Right? And I'll get into this a little bit, Troy, because I think it's a good question. Andrea, tomorrow night, one of your draft picking two-spot full PPR. I've kind of run through that. If you want me to run through it again or if you have a specific question, you will ask it now and I will answer. Um, so so I think people are avoiding acres because of the obvious concerns. And I think, you know, again, everybody's value is a little depressed here. You're seeing J.K. Dobbins, Elijah Mitchell, Cam Akers, Josh Jacobs, all in the same range. It's not really surprising. Uh, I've seen acres going higher, though. And the current ADP is higher. If I look at the current just regular draft, you know, 12 team um, going with the NFFC, he is quarter, he is running back 17, going off ahead of Ezekiel Elliott, going off ahead of Brees Hall, Dobbins, Montgomery, Gibson, Mitchell, Dillon, who's going later that he should probably. Uh, <clears throat> so there's that. I don't know if people are really avoiding him as they're a little concerned about the situation, I think, right? Uh, the talk, first of all, he's beat up. But so is Daryl Henderson. But the Sean McVay and offensive coordinator Liam Cohen coming out and saying, hey, look, we've got two starting running backs. We're trying to figure out ways to use both of them. Okay. Why haven't they ever done this before? So, like, maybe they mix it up a little bit, but you look back to last year, you know, when when it was Daryl Henderson was healthy and rolling, it was Daryl Henderson getting the vast bulk of the touches. When he wasn't and Sony Michelle was there, he was getting the vast bulk of the touches. Uh, so no matter. Oh, is it Pedro? Ah, Pedro Resto. I didn't even see you in the chat, Pedro. Where are you at, man? Just throw it out there, Pedro. This is interesting. Go with Carson Wentz. So this is what can happen. And, and so like, I think in these leagues and, and, and by the way, TJ Monday, Oh, Ford did the same thing. I think if you're waiting, these are viable quarterbacks in super flex leagues, right? Davis Mills, a guy I like a little bit. Jared Goff, right? And so, uh, so Cap 22 USA Flu. That's a long name. Uh, team four, and I'll look at all these teams. Uh, so Scott is the last one with one quarterback. It'll be interesting to see if that changes. Uh, he held out quite a while. Held out quite a while. But you look at this range of quarterbacks. I mean, all these players have shown at various times. 
Or Ryan Tannehill a few years ago was a much higher end quarterback than he's viewed as now. Carson Wentz, I thought was very serviceable last year. Whether you saw that from a, you know, whether you saw that from a uh, NFL perspective, clearly the Colts did not. From a fantasy perspective, it wasn't horrible, right? Uh, so that's interesting. Ryan Tannehill comes up, but Davis Mills, another guy who improved greatly down the stretch last year, paired up with Derek Carr, hammered that value in between. I like this. Uh, do we have a team on auto? Yeah, we do have one team on auto. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I think Mills is a great play. And there we go, Daniel Jones. Scott carrying it out one more round, <laughs> at least. It'll be interesting to see what he does here. Uh, with Justin Herbert, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon, uh, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Dalton Schultz, Gabriel Davis, and Damian Harris. It's a nice team. Uh, team one, jo Josh Allen, no surprise. Tom Brady, Saquon Barkley, Matt Ryan. Got his three quarterbacks fairly early. That's, uh, you know, I mean, I get it. Uh, and I like Matt Ryan an awful lot. I think he might be in for a little bit of a rebound, competent Offensive line, competent coaching staff. Not that he didn't have that in Atlanta, but he didn't have the offensive line. And the skilled players were a bit of a mess, right, beyond uh, Kyle Pitts once uh, Calvin Ridley was gone. So Michael Pittman, a little pair up with Matt Ryan there. Amon Ross St. Brown, Chris Godwin, Rashad Penny, a guy that I think is going overlooked a little bit in drafts. Uh, don't know. Oh, another round. This is going to be interesting, Scott. I appreciate your experimental draft here. Chase Edmonds, a guy that's coming on a little bit, I think, you know, getting a little more confident in the workload for him. So got that going. This is exciting. I like to take my starters before I fill in, but these later rounds make you or break you. That is true, Dennis Brown. And I, I'm just wondering, you know, throw in the comments here if you uh, agree with that. How many of you tend to, like, try to fill your starting positions uh, before you work that out? Auto-drafted Gibson. Uh, Auto-draft. auto uh, Gibson, Thielen. I mean, the auto-draft team is not working out that horrible. Cooper Cup, Dalvin Cook, Trey Lance, Justin Fields. Uh, wouldn't be my ideal pick. Uh, T. Higgins, solid. Mike Williams, solid. J.K. Dobbins, solid. Antonio Gibson. Should we talk about Antonio Gibson? Adam Thielen, by the way. Two wide receivers have scored more touchdowns than Adam Thielen since 2020. Devontae Adams is one. Mike Evans is the other. Interesting. Thielen was the quarterback, was the wide receiver, I want to say wide receiver seven when he went down to injury in week 10 last season. So interesting. Not, you know, interesting how the tight ends are kind of slow rolling or the value is certainly depressed there. Darren Waller and going in the, what, sixth round. Uh, Dalton Schultz right uh, after him. Pitts in the, what, fourth round. A little bit. George Kittle in the fifth. So interesting there. Uh, I think, I think, I think, I tend to be maybe, you know, just a little bit of an obsessive compulsive where I do want to grab my uh, grab my starters for the most part. But I do find myself more and more, it seems like some, a number of the more recent drafts that I've been in have been three flex positions. Uh, the Kings Classic drafts in Canton were like that. And the flex draft that I'm in, uh, the league, Flex League, uh, the Fantasy League of Expert Champions, whatever it's called. I'm the defending champion in the best ball division there. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I, you know, so I've gone a little heavier on wide receivers there and I've talked about this in other chats and, uh, and you can uh, tell me what you think about this, but you know, I'm kind of going a more of a hero RB where I get that first or second round running back. And I'm okay. If I don't get my next running back to around four or five, get a few wide receivers in there, maybe even send that out and grab a tight end in that mix as well. Ertz over Hawkinson. That is happening this year. That's happening in drafts I'm in, um, but I'm usually waiting. It's kind of a signal. Uh, I'd never take my quarterbacks one and two, uh, Dennis Brown says. So uh, let's see. Normally I do starters, but that RB value is hot. I would be set to make some trades. Yep. Dennis Brown, I've never taken quarterbacks one to two or so. So interesting stuff there. So let's look at some of the teams. Matthew Whitfield, uh, and I think we're not going to bring anyone on today, Matthew. So if you're in your bathrobe, you can keep it on, uh, uh, and we'll get you. We'll get you in next time. Uh, I'll get it set up a little better in advance. I thought you would be here, but I wasn't hundred percent sure. So 
Uh, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Kirk Cousins, James Conner. This is a fantastic start for me. I love Conner. I love Henry. Like both those quarterbacks, Kirk Cousins, there are numbers out there. He is amongst the – he's been a much quarter, better quarterback than you think. I think uh, – who was it? Uh, my buddy Matthew Berry threw it out on his uh, – on his uh, list of 100 things this year that just was a phenomenal. Uh, let's see if I can bring that up. Come on. And run through the numbers. Yes, in the last two years, uh, 30, the number of quarterbacks who have thrown uh, 30 touchdown passes each of the last two years, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, and Kirk Cousins. And the same list are the only players with more total touchdown passes than Kirk Cousins. This was in the Mike Zimmer offense, people, not in the Sean McVay style offense that is coming along with Kevin O'Connell. So, so that's interesting. I'm going to wait. I'm waiting with bated breath for Scott Kobe's next pick. But I do love that start for Matthew. Great start. And I, and I like beyond there, right? Darren Waller I love. And we'll see if the hamstring injury is an issue. There's that next quarterback. And it's Baker Mayfield. And I do think, you know, I mean, at that point, you're looking for a guy with job security and maybe some upside. I think he fits the bill there. I mean, I'm not out there eagerly drafting him in anything but a two-quarterback league. Might prefer him as my third quarterback in a two-quarterback league or a super flex. But the way this draft has been going and the experiments going on is very interesting. Baker was his next pick, says Troy Olson, so he loved that. <clears throat> so interesting how this is all playing out. Uh, so the long wait at quarterback did not leave Scott Kobe totally bereft at the position, depending on your position here you of Baker Mayfield. I mean, look, we've seen him play reasonably well, right? Two years ago. Uh, follows up Cordell Patterson. Great values here as we go down against the quarterbacks, you know, kind of depressing the value of the other players. But Cordell Patterson is a guy who's growing on me just in general in all drafts. Uh, not necessarily because I think he's going to be as fantastic as he was last year because I don't think that. But he's uh, running back 37. You can get him as your fourth running back, 104th pick overall. You're heading into the double-digit rounds, ninth round there. <clears throat> I mean, I don't think he's going to totally go away, right? I mean, he might do less, but he's not going to not going to disappear, not going to vanish. And we still haven't seen any of these other runners there, you know, establish themselves. Damian Williams or Tyler Algier or Caleb Huntley, whoever, uh, come up and establish themselves as a as a great threat to Cordero Patterson's workload. I mean, I, I'm assuming somebody will, <clears throat> but we have not seen it yet, so. Patterson is the hour before. I love that as well. I'll take that all day long. So Scott Kobe's running backs. Got the quarterbacks, Justin Herbert, Baker Mayfield. Uh, running backs, jo Joe Mixon, uh, Damian Harris, Kareem Hunt, Cordero Patterson. Some upside plays there. I mean, Kareem Hunt somehow, you know, cobbles something together every year. Let's hope he stays on the field. And maybe we'll see a little more two running back sets there in Cleveland is some of the thoughts there. So, uh, just running through the teams in the order they were picked. Uh, team one, Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Matt Ryan in the first four rounds. Uh, Brady and Ryan going in the fourth with the fourth pick. Saquon Barkley mixed in at running back, then went wide receiver heavy. I think this is a great approach, and it kind of paid off for to me with the running backs he got in round eight and nine. You've got Michael Pittman, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Chris Godwin, a really solid trio of receivers. And if Godwin gets off to a slow start, you can hang in there with Tyler Lockett, I think. <clears throat> so nice start and then came back with Penny and Edmonds. Look, I mean, Kenneth Walker III has the hernia issue. We don't know how serious it is. They're still talking like maybe he can be ready week one. Not entirely sure I believe that. I mean, it's not a sports hernia. I guess that's a good thing. But I've had regular hernia surgery. I wasn't ready to do anything in a month, right? I mean, so <clears throat> we'll be interested to see how that works out. But like, even if Kenneth Walker was healthy, uh, if you think Rashad Penny didn't wasn't going into the season as locked in running back one, assuming nothing happens between now and then. I know he's had some little minor issues. He's got COVID right now. Won't play this week. Seems to be going around a little bit there in Seattle. But, you know, thinking that the guy who ended last year on a streak of six games where he ran for 200 yards more than any other running back in the NFL, He's locked in as the number one. What do we know about Pete Carroll? He'll stick with the guy, right? Even if there's a younger player uh, that they expended some draft capital on. Chris Carson said the same thing, you know, with Rashad Penny. Wow, this guy comes in a first-round pick. He's going to come in and dominate the carries. It's going to be fantastic. Well, it didn't work out that way, did it? 
Chris Carson was the guy he stuck with until he couldn't. Then Penny came in and and finally figured it out. And what, his third year? He has the injury issues, and I get it, and a lot of people are down on him because they have the concerns about the injury. I am the injury agnostic. I'm not going to be scared of players getting hurt because I think they're all going to get hurt. So interesting. And Chase Edmonds, it sounds like the reports out of training camp have been super positive on him. Matt Donnelly, he's out there sniping people, Matt. You're sniping people. Uh, so I like this team off a lot. Dawson Knox, I'm kind of not as high on him, but, you know, waiting this long. I think, you know, between him and Fryer Muth and, you know, probably like, you know, do I like him better than Knox? No, do I like Ertz better? I think he probably went right in the right spot, right? That's where I'd be at. Uh, so Scott's team is uh, Justin Herbert, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Gabriel Davis. That's a great receiving core, I think, the top three and four anyway. Uh, he's yet to add another receiver. Got a nice stable of running backs, a solid tight end in Dalton Schultz, so that's good. Team three, Sam Bam. He's been a good drafter on this site, uh, at least in our chats. Coming in with Jonathan Taylor, I think once you got that start, Travis Kelsey, two players that probably give you leverage over, if not the entire field, a vast majority of the field. Matthew Stafford and Tua Tonga Valoa, two quarterbacks I like a fair amount. I mean, I don't know about Tua, but I know they've put all the pieces in place for him to have a phenomenal season and if he can deliver on that. Uh, Travis Etienne, I know there's some concerns. James Robinson, will he be ready week one? Possible. Michael DiRocco from ESPN is you know, kind of of the opinion that even if Robinson's around and he's going to have more carries, but ETN will match him in touches uh, as a receiving asset. So Allen Robinson, I love. Brandon Cooks, I love. Uh, great picks there. Daniel Jones is your third quarterback. He's your third quarterback. That works. Damian Pierce. I'm surprised Damian Pierce, you know, kind of lasted down this far. You know, I'm looking at some of the players going after him. I guess it's not that surprising. Uh, but Pierce is a guy who is, looks like he's going to be a more dynamic piece in this Houston offense than the running backs from last year. It's a very low bar. The, the Texans are a horrible running football team, scored very few rushing touchdowns. Hopefully Pierce can change that, but the offensive line hasn't improved notably. I wouldn't get too excited. Chris Olave, Kadarius, Tony, Tyler Boyd. Uh, Olave and Tony, great upside plays. Boyd could be a solid, you know, avoid the zero type of play. Going on to Team 4, the Captain 22, USA's. There's a lot of things going on there. I can't see the names very well. I'll just admit, if I'm butchering the screen names, forgive me. Uh, Pat Mahomes, quarterback 3. I don't have him as my quarterback 3 anymore. I was my, like my quarterback 5. Hmm. Go check the rankings out at footballdiaries.com. You'll find out all my rankings there. You'll find all the staff rankings there. And our various staffers' rankings are available right now. Tons of articles and content. It's a constant stream of news. Uh, plenty of tools. Plenty of things to get you ready for the season right now. The August update, footballdiaries.com. Go check it out. Uh, you'll enjoy what you find there. And that'll carry into the regular season, the Flash Update premium content. And the My Fantasy GM, plenty of tools. They're available to help you get through the season, manage your teams, uh, make sure all your rosters are in tip-top condition throughout the year. Use the promo code DIEHARDS and get 15% off. So I do like the I do like that team a little bit. I got, I'm got i not going to lie. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, Javante Williams, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill. That's a pretty good starting point. George Kittle is where I get a little bit. Eh. I, look, I hope he's fantastic. It seems like Trey Lance is looking a little further down the field, but in the red zone, maybe this is a, a place where George Kittle can pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, Mac Jones, Jared Goff. I think these are two perfectly serviceable quarterback twos. I think Goff may end up playing more than you think right now. He's got some great weapons around him. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper in round nine. Even in this uh, kind of draft where the values are depressed, that just seems like he's going very late. Remember, he's a really good player. We aren't that scared. DK Metcalf doesn't have a good quarterback, and he went round six. Is Jacoby Brissett that much worse than the Locksmith? Or the Smith Lock, however that plays out. I don't know. Alan Lazard in that team. Okay, let me finish this team. Uh, Brian Robinson, buzzy kind of player right now. We'll see. And going still after Antonio Gibson, thank goodness. But but man, Antonio Gibson being talked about as, uh, as the primary kick returner, that tells you uh, that they think Brian Robinson can do the job. Robert Woods, I think, has an overlooked commodity. Going to be a solid play. Talk now that Traylon Burks won't open the season as a starter. I won't be surprising if that's the case. Kenneth Gainwell uh, and Sky Moore, 
Sky Moore worries me a little bit. Still working as the fifth wide receiver, even with guys hurt. Justin Watson seems to be ahead of him. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, David Forty, David 462, I believe that is. Najee Harris, Debo Samuel, Aaron Rodgers, Brees Hall, still the running back too, according to Rich Samini at ESPN. Uh, Michael Carter still in the ahead of him on the depth chart and maybe in the workload for now. That's going to change. Uh, Trevor Lawrence comes in. Uh, and uh, as a quarterback, too, I think that's a pretty reasonable price point for him. DK Metcalf and Alan Zard, these might, guys might be better than you think. So oh, I, I mentioned this before. You've heard me talk about it on Football Diehards on the Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Dwayne McFarland, my friend of Pro Football Focus, has thrown out some numbers and reminds us all that Josh Gordon, during his magical 2013 season, did that with a quarterback trio of Brandon Whedon, Brian Oyer, and Jason Campbell. I think they completed 56% Come of their on. passes collectively. And still a magic season. So DK Metcalf, there's hope there. Uh, Troy Olson running a long queue, but I'm installing software on an ATM. So holler at me if I miss a pick so I can make me off, take me off the auto and check my queue. Will do. Thank you. Uh, appreciate Troy every time you jump in uh, and you've made some interesting fodder here for discussion. Again, if you have questions about this draft or just general draft strategy, go ahead and throw them into the chat and I will get to them. Um, I want to go to Drop Top Hawk, uh, Cooper Cup, Dalvin Cook, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, T. Higgins, Mike Williams. I like those wide receivers right there. And I think these, you know, I think these are reasonable values. J.K. Dobbins and Antonio Gibson in rounds seven and eight. Pretty solid. Adam Thielen, a player I like. Kenneth Walker. We'll see when he gets back. I mean, look, I'm not going to be dismissive of him and think he's not going to have a role at all. I think Penny's the lead piece, but. At some point, they may go to the committee. Traylon Burks, we'll see if he can get on the field. I do not think his not starting is a permanent condition. I think that will change as we get into the season. Uh, it just, it's just a matter of how long. Daryl Henderson, I think Henderson's a great value if you think that something might happen to Cam Akers. Daryl Henderson, definitely next man up there. 12th round seems good. Kenny Pickett, the eventual starter in Pittsburgh. We'll see. Great draft by everybody, by the way. Uh and Hunter Henry, a uh, very solid tight end. People seem to be shying off him in, in their drafts. I get it. He's very touchdown dependent, and I understand that. So, sure. Okay, so TJ Monday 04, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Derek Carr, Leonard Fournette, Court and Sutton, A.J. Dillon, Darryl, Darnell Mooney, Davis Mills. Boy, that is a fantastic start. This might be my favorite start to a draft. Uh, in this particular draft, I love the way that got off. Uh, Tony Pollard, not a huge Pollard guy, but clearly he's going to be productive, right? And we may see him work out of the slot a little bit and maybe bring you a little more week-to-week -week value. TJ Hawkinson, Michael Carter, the Jets running back one, people. Watch out for him. No, won't stay that way. Mike Gusecki, maybe he gets traded somewhere where they know how to use him or not. Isaiah Spiller, and we're down into the kicker territory there. Uh, Matthew uh, Whitfield, uh, a regular here and an appreciated teammate. Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Kirk Cousins, James Conner, Terry McLaurin, Darren Waller, Juju Smith-Schuster, Michael Thomas. Love all that. Deshaun Watson, if you want to have a quarterback for the end of the season, he might be it. Could he be a league winner? It's entirely possible. Didn't look good in his one preseason game, but we'll see what happens. Going to be back for six games right now. Miles Sanders. Uh, Garrett Wilson, uh, it was interesting. Uh, Robert Sala kind of basically said, you know, hey, he's got to get stronger and quit fooling around with the line of scrimmage. Uh, Rashad White, uh, Albert Okuebunum, look at me go. Uh, and it seems like he's kind of having some issues with the, the way the offense is playing out. It doesn't seem like he's, he's fitting right in. As the draft comes to an end, I'll go through the remaining teams. And uh, Emil Kadlik. <laughs> Uh, who waited a little bit on that second quarterback. So he gets Jalen Hurts, player I love, talked about him at length, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift, two top 10 running backs, Kyle Pitts, tight end three, and still gets Deontay Johnson, Rashad Bateman. I think they're perfectly serviceable receivers, and maybe even with Deontay Johnson, not without upside. Neither is Bateman. I mean, remember, he's a first-round pick. The, the Ravens were perfectly satisfied to let Marquise Brown move on, a 91-catch player last year. So, interesting to see. Ryan Tannehill, I think, is quarterback two there, is, uh, is a good value. Elijah Moore, though, there's an overlooked guy. We're not talking about him a lot, maybe because he's a Jet. Don't know, but uh, all reports from training camp have been super positive about what he has been doing and what his role will be. 
uh, Devontae Smith, and he's been hurt a lot, but it's so far in training camp, not in the play. And, I mean, I thought he was a lot better last year than I actually expected him to be. So interested to see how that plays out with working opposite A.J. Brown might be a good thing for him. Uh, James Cook, the receiving asset uh, acquired by the Buffalo Bills. I'm not against getting pieces of this offense. Sounds like he's struggling with pass protection uh, in training camp, but that'll probably change. Uh, you know, he'll pick up the pace there, but they're going to protect him. You better be able to pass block if you're in a backfield where Josh Allen is the quarterback, the investment in him. Uh, George Pickens is everybody's darling right now in the Pittsburgh Steelers camp, clearly outplaying his draft position. And not surprisingly, his draft position was de depressed for a few reasons. So interesting to see where he goes. Tyler Algier, a guy I like an awful lot for Emil Cadillac. Uh, You know, I think he could easily be the between the tackles component. We're not there yet, but heading the right direction. And of course, everybody's darling. Romeo Dubs for the Green Bay Packers, so working with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, so let's see what Pedro Resto's team looks like. He is BX Novad, Nomads here. McCaffrey, Chase, Andrews, Chubb, DJ Moore, Jameis Winston, Marquise Brown, Carson Wentz, Drake London, Melvin Gordon, Marcus Mariota is quarterback three, Naheem Hines, Irv Smith. I like this team an awful lot. Great job, Pedro. Uh, I'm I'm impressed. That's a good team with waiting late on quarterbacks. Not getting your first quarterback till round six. Uh, interesting move. The mighty Matt Donnelly uh, comes in with nice, you know, comes in hot on the quarterbacks. Again, the guys on the tail end of this draft, both Matt and Troy, totally understandable. Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Alvin Kamara. Little issues with Kamara off the field, but it sounds like he's going to escape the legal punishment, at least for this season. There's been a civil case filed. I don't think that changes the criminal portion of this, and that's what's driving the bus here. As long as the video is not released, I think he's in good shape. Yeah, A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddell, Josh Jacobs, Elijah Mitchell, Hunter Renfro, Christian Kirk, the values, ah, and DeAndre Hopkins, likely the wide receiver one in Arizona when he's back from suspension. Uh, he'll miss a third of the season, but he's not dead, people. Still has some value. And in the, what, what round is that? Tenth round? Yeah. Cole Komet. A lot of people like Cole Komet. I'm not a lot of those people, but I get it, man. I get the target share. There's not a lot of other options there. And I think this is mostly that, that he missed out on Darnell Mooney. Matt Donnelly loves Darnell Mooney more than, more than his mustache, maybe. Maybe not. It's probably close. Jacoby Myers, the recent reporting out of camp in New England is, is Myers has been rock solid steady. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, the wide receiver three at this point in that Bills offense. Wandale Robinson, outstanding work. Matt Donnelly eschewing the kickers and defenses the rest of you took. So did Troy Olson, by the way. So And drop top hawk, so uh, fair enough for them. Um, I'm more interested in the uh, upper echelon picks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Hey, thanks a lot for coming in and a uh, very nice draft. Uh, I thought you did a fantastic job. thought it was uh, really good values in those mid-round receivers. Devin Singletary I like as well. So we'll see what Chase Claypool and Nicole Hardman guys that may outproduce my expectations for sure. They're certainly in good position. So appreciate everyone who came in and drafted. Troy Olson, I've appreciated his drafts and all of these mock drafts that we've watched and analyzed. Uh, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, starting off with two quarterbacks. Makes, again, perfect sense, drafting at the tail end of this affair. Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, David Montgomery, kind of an old-school smash-the-running-backs approach after he got the quarterbacks. First wide receiver, Jerry Judy, then some more running backs, Cam Akers and Gus Edwards. Edwards will miss the first four weeks of the season, probably take him a little time to get up to speed, so that's fine as well. Brandon Ayuk, a player I like an awful lot. Jarvis Landry. Jahan Dotson, kind of the late Michael Gallup will be back after. Michael Gallup, by the way, did not go on the pup list to open the season. So he might be back week two, maybe week three, maybe week four. We'll be definitely not miss that first four, four games. James Robinson. So a little bit of time release aspect in Troy's draft. I think it's very interesting. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's kind of not the usual, right? We see so many people go wide receiver heavy. Uh, and it makes perfect sense to do that, especially in some of these flexi leagues where you have the extra flexes. The depth, the quality depth is at wide receiver, but if you look at the running backs that Troy got, 
looks like he was taking the best players available in his mind, and there's clear paths to workload for for Jones. He's going to share with with uh, A.J. Dillon, but we see what he has done in the past. That's nothing new. The share is built in. Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard is there, but Elliott is going to be the primary guy, and we saw him coming off a top 10 season despite playing with a torn PCL. David Montgomery, a little talk about him sharing, but still the primary piece there. Cam Akers, the same story for him. Uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire seems to be definitely locked in at the top, and James Robinson, who should be ready week one, and if he's not, will be shortly thereafter. So interesting drafts. Zach Wilson, the quarterback three there. Again, one of his... Targets Denzel Mims requesting a trade just here, and that makes perfect sense. So great draft. Interesting how it played out, the various strategies at quarterback. Um, I think there are a number of teams here that I'd be happy to roll with, including some that waited a little longer on the quarterback, right? Uh, Emil Cadillac's team waiting for that second quarterback. Of course, Pedro Resto waiting entirely on quarterback, not getting his first quarterback until round six, then waiting until rounds eight and uh, 11 to shore up the position. So Really interesting stuff. Great draft. I appreciate everyone who came in and drafted. Appreciate everyone who came and watched. Uh, and then, again, anytime you come here to these chats, feel free to ask any questions you have. Happy to answer them. I will be back on Saturday for my usual Ask Me Anything hour. Uh, we'll take more of your lineup strategy, not lineup strategy, draft, and other questions, keeper questions as well. Uh, tune into Football Diehards. I'm on tomorrow, Friday, noon. Eastern time, an unusual time for football diehards. Uh, so check that out. And then next week back at 8 p.m. Eastern time uh, for most of the week, we're going to do an NFL uh, radio special on Friday that's a little different time. But check your local listings for all that. And meanwhile, hit football diehards uh, for all your fantasy football information needs, uh, our premium content, the August update draft guide up and running. We'll morph into the flash update as the season starts. Sam Bam, great job of drafting. Really appreciate everyone who came in and drafted. Appreciate everyone who hung around and watched. Hit the like button if you like what you saw. Hit the dislike button if you cannot stand me. Go ahead. Hit it. I'm okay with that, man. I'm secure myself. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And uh, really appreciate everyone coming. We will see you here hopefully Saturday for my usual Ask Me Anything. And we've got plans for this channel. we got plans. We're going to do some stuff this season. It's going to be fun. Stand by for that. And for now, that's it. We'll catch you on Saturday. Noon Eastern.